Present. Vice President Wilson? Present. Secretary George? I just wanted to let you guys know, me and Desiree had our event on Wednesday. We did the course evaluation event, and a lot of you guys are there, so I want to say thanks, especially to Erica and Hassan, because you guys helped out a lot. But um, we got the course evaluations. Um, we got a lot of feedback from students, too, on what they liked and what they didn't like. So I do plan on meeting with the academic vice provost and like, letting her know about it. And I think we got like a little over 100 people, so it was pretty successful, and I just want to say thanks to you guys. together and it's called the Cleveland Winter Edition. I'm not sure if you folks have heard about it, but essentially what it is is it's uh, multiple lectures, uh, lunch with executives, and a career fair at the end. There's a $25 admission fee, so we're using our funds uh, as a scholarship for free admissions for CSU students. And we already hit our max for um, students going. It's 20. The bank can only hold 150, so we're just going to stay at that. And part two of our project is collecting data to see how folks feel about the resources in business college. And right now we're about halfway through with our data. And I hope by next semester to present that for everybody because I feel like it would be mutually beneficial to all of us. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Taya and Senator Trin. Uh, I highly encourage everyone to attend this conference um, or workshop. I think um, Senator Taya himself has benefited from it quite a lot. And since we're all student leaders, I think we could all benefit as well. Uh, any other announcements? Uh, Senator Medina and then Senator Kocha. Um, well, my project was to uh, put more touring to class college. Um, thankfully, my, the professors in class college are super good at getting to emails really fast. And on Wednesday, I was literally on the computer for like four hours emailing all the class faculty. 
and they um, agreed that they would let me go into their classes to pass around the survey, um, asking students how would they want um, tutoring to be implemented next semester, and in which classes they would want to like have more focus since since tech and have three um, sociology technology classes. <coughs> Um, so I'll also also I'll be working with um, <laughs> um she will be helping me out too with this project. Um, we're super excited because we're also going to be working with TAS to expand those classes. So that's that's how it's going so far. Um, well, on Monday I'm gonna have um, uh, the table. Uh, for their course evaluation in Open College from 4 to 6 to target credit students. And on Tuesday, I'm going to do that in Business College too. So 4 to 6, anyone wants to help me? So yeah, it's not going to be food and things, just maybe it will take a popcorn machine and go down and do this with, you know, a lot of things, yeah. Okay. So that's specifically targeted for the graduate students? Yes. Okay. And one more thing. Uh, for. Um, Next uh, orientation day for the graduate students, I think it's in May, Jan no, sorry, January 12th. Yes, so we are now on the back and forth with the graduate students. Uh, assessing. So we'll have a table that day. So we'll encourage new uh, graduate students to join SGA and tell them about SGA and what SGA does. Also, we'll have Malik as a speaker and answering questions that day. If you guys would like to participate, let Senator Koji know. Uh, any other announcements? Advisor Johnson. Uh, I just want to thank you all. I know that you've been involved in a lot of the interviewing that we've had take place in the Department of Student Life. Um, I know a lot of you sat in on the parking director interviews as well as the assistant director for student involvement interviews. Um, if you haven't yet, I know the assistant director interviews wrapped up today. Um, and if you've been part of that, please fill out the evaluation because we really appreciate the student voice and we want that to be definitely present when we make our dis hiring decisions. So thank you guys for being part of that. Any other updates, Senator uh, For any of those who have not yet signed up for the late night study, mm -hmm. go ahead and do so. The form is on board soon and uh, it's going to be taking place one week in December. I believe the date is going to be um, December 11th to the 16th. And um, there's going to be various amounts of um, food and beverages that will be provided during the day from various sources. Um, one would be the President's Office, another one we are going to put on. Um, and I believe that there might be a few more scheduled. That's going to be around dinner time. Um, so we need some help with that, and then we also need some help with the late night study as well. So if you guys haven't already signed up for it, um, thank you to everyone who did. Uh, you can definitely do that in the same. Will we get a schedule up soon, just so we know who is going to be at that volunteering? Uh, Secretary Gretsch, I know, is overseeing the work sync forms, but there is, yeah, I did come up with a timeline that updates. Um, just piggybacking off of that with your copy, uh, shout out to Senator Teo for providing us with a copy machine in the office that was highly appreciated.
November 5th, 18th, November 18th. Uh, Senator Koja? I second. Okay. Any discussion? Um, objections? Hearing none. Motion passes. Before we get on to um, new business, I know that Dr. Garbrand walked in. Are you prepared for an update or would you like to wait? I would welcome that if you don't mind. Thank you. Always good to see you, and I certainly wish everyone the best on exams. I'm excited you're helping out with the exam breaks, and uh, Jamie is organizing efforts on uh, our behalf to help you with that too, so I look forward to that. Um, you continue to be represented extremely well by your student trustees. We just had our, our November Board of Trustee meeting on the 30th of this month, or of last month, uh, and I think they continue to do a remarkable job. I mentioned that to you because uh, very soon, um, it's, it's going to come remarkably quickly, we'll start advertising recruiting for <laughs> trustee positions uh, for next year. So you'll start seeing that information probably January or February. If you're interested in that, I encourage you to talk to the current trustees, um, get a sense of what's involved with that, and obviously I'm happy to answer your questions about that as well. Last thing I'm going to share with you is something that's been very controversial. Uh, and I seldom, if ever, will actually read to you, but I'm going to read uh, a very specific statement um, in just a moment. Um, some of you may have heard of Milo Yiannopoulos. Have any of you heard of this gentleman? Okay, a couple of you at least have some familiarity. Um, so I will, I'm gonna read this statement to clarify what has happened and, have, and what has not happened. Um, and then I will be sending this specific statement that I'm gonna read to you to about 85 students that have written to me uh, out of frustration that this has been canceled or frustration that we would ever entertain him coming here as a speaker. Uh, and I hope that this will be more clear to you after I read this statement. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have as well. Remember, what I'm about to read to you is going to go out to individual people who have written to me or the president or a number of other people uh, expressing concern about this. Um, in response to your email concerning Mr. Yiannopoulos having an event on campus, I wanted to provide you with more complete information. We did not deny Mr. Yiannopoulos the opportunity to use our campus facilities, and we would never raise any security concerns, as was stated by the organization Turning Point USA. CSU was initially approached by a student organization which wanted to reserve space on campus for an event. In reviewing this request, we realized this was a booking for an outside group rather than a student group reserving space. The event in question did not meet university policy regarding events sponsored by a student group. Students are allowed and encouraged to bring a wide array of speakers and performers. External groups are also welcome to rent space on campus. All external groups are held to the same criteria of renting space and are not judged by their content. The external organization promoting the speaking engagement was then offered the exact, same, same, the exact same opportunity as all external groups to submit an event request subject to normal fees required for such activities. They declined to do so. I also wanted to bring to your attention that Mr. Yiannopoulos was just recently on our campus as part of a properly booked campus event, the LGBT for Trump event during the RNC. Additional properly booked groups were also on campus during the convention, including the Ohio College of Republicans, the Republican Main Street Partnership, and the Republican National Committee, which co-sponsored our cybersecurity forum. As stated in CSU President Ronald M. Berkman's letter to students, faculty, and staff, Cleveland State University is committed to an inclusive and diverse campus. We will continue to be guided by this principle. It is also my fervent hope that at CSU, freedom of speech will not come at the expense of inclusion and diversity. If our campus is to be a place for differences, are respected, seeking a better understanding of those differences will be essential as we move forward. Again, I want to thank you for taking the time to share your thoughts. Sincerely, Boyd Yarbrough, yeah. Vice President of Student Affairs. So I will make two comments and I'll see if you have any questions about this. First, I want to make it crystal clear, we did not cancel this event. They had the opportunity to book it appropriately. They withdrew that request. In essence, they canceled their own event. Second is, I will never, ever judge uh, any group or speaker by the words that they choose to say. 
I firmly believe in freedom of speech, First Amendment rights. You may say things that I disagree with wholeheartedly. I may find them offensive, but I will defend your right to say those things. Um, and so I just wanted you to understand philosophically where I, as your Vice President, stand on that. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Anyone have any questions for Dr. Yarbrough? Thank you very much. Goodbye for one's hands. Students who get an I or an incomplete um, on their on their transcript ought to be placed uh, on the president's list or the dean's list. Um, what the proposal was was that, that those students who do get an incomplete would no longer be on that, you know, barring certain uh, circumstances. Um, and so, if anyone, if any students have come to the, the, the Senate to talk about this, or it's relevant to any of you in any way. Um, let us know so we can give faculty center our feedback on, on that issue. Um, and then something that uh, uh, Vice President Wilson had brought up in the past um, amongst the e-board and maybe with some senators was a potential uh, um, program at CSU where students could take three years um, of undergrad and three years of law school. Um, that's something that we have, uh, are, are going to have an agreement with Notre Dame College. Students who are at Notre Dame College during this program were able, will be able to do three years at Notre Dame and then forego their fourth year, or essentially their fourth year as a mixed year, with their three years in law school. So it's an accelerated program. Um, so I'm bringing that to your attention so we can continue that conversation and advocate, um, so long as students want to see something like that. Um, I'd also like to just you know, say, you know, with the assistant director, um, that was extremely helpful for all of you to be there. I appreciate you taking your time out of your day. Uh, again, our stated purpose is to make sure we are representing uh, the needs, concerns, and interests of students. And we did that exactly in those meetings, making sure that those individuals, um, or that candidate would be someone who is, is student-focused and can serve students. So um, for you to give your input is, is remarkably important. Um, library hours, please, please sign up to, to, to command that. You know, I will be there from 12 to, to mid or midnight to 2 a.m. one of those nights. Um, you know, we'll, we'll make some fun out of it, okay? Um, there was a CSU Foundation Board meeting this week. Um, they, they highlighted auxiliary police officers. Um, these are students who can basically intern with Cleveland State's uh, Police uh, Department. Um, and going off the conversation that we've had with President Berkman, he is committed to giving students opportunities to intern, to co-op, um, within the departments that we have here on campus. Um, so I'll just drop that one as a little seed in your brain and see how it grows about where, where we could potentially do that. I keep bringing up this, this example of HR, or a student who's, who's organizational behavior focused. We have an HR department in Cleveland State. You know, why, why don't we have a program in which a student can intern with Cleveland State's department, uh, HR department? We have a finance department. You know, so you know, kind, of, kind of ruminate over that idea and see, see where it takes you. Um, just, had, just came from the GFAC meeting. Um, I'll just give you a quick breakdown of some of these numbers that we have. Um, between the, G the GFAC groups, we have $28,000 left in carryover. Um, and we still have this $110,000 left over that we're meant to allocate to other organizations who historically have not had access to that money. Um, and what I want to know from student government is which organizations um, most pertinently need that money. Um, there are some organizations that don't necessarily qualify to come through student government to get that funding. Um, so the potential exists for them to go to GFAC, uh, either by being a permanent GFAC member or for us to temporarily fund them. Um, but we need to, number one, uh, the conversation we had in GFAC was we need to identify who those organizations are. Uh, I'll give you an example of the ones that we uh, spoke on and, and who we're potentially considering funding, you know. Um, are the Viking Vets Organization, uh, Lift Up Vikes, and the Graduate Student Association. 
Um, these are all organizations that have a much larger reach and a much larger focus. Um, so, you know, where where is this money best suited? These general fee dollars that every student pays into. Um, obviously, we don't want the, the cheese organization going to GFAC and saying we want GFAC money. It's for those groups that have a, a larger a larger focus. Um, so, you know, have those conversations amongst other students and and bring all that information back to the larger group and say, you know, th this argument, but this group is, you know, th there's a arguable uh, circumstances in which they can be funded. Um, so please make sure that you're having those conversations. Uh, okay. um, so they don't qualify to receive the same funding that any other organization would have, like 3,000 on campus, 2,000 off, they don't qualify? Um, not necessarily, they can, as long as it's within the boundaries of um, our funding requirements, they definitely can. Uh, someone like Lift Up Bikes would not be able to go. They're not a student organization per se, uh, but they do serve a lot of students. Mm -hmm. So if so, these larger groups were to be considered, then would we provide them with the same amount of funding as a regular organization? Um, like would that, is that, or no. is that like something that No, we would not. So how would we We don't fund GFAC units. Would you please explain to the Senate what exactly GFAC is? Got you. <laughs> so, um, out of every credit hour that you pay, which is roughly $426, 60 of those dollars, I believe, or 56 of those dollars are specific to the general fee, okay? Um, half, about half of that or a little bit more is dedicated to athletics, okay? So every credit hour, you have a $60 fee coming out of that. So 60 times the full credit load, which is 12, that's your general fee, okay? The other, uh, um, there's some, programmatic things that I think is dedicated to, but the majority of it is a lot, of, or a lot of it goes to the GFAC group, okay? And there are several GFAC organizations that have a stake in this money. We are one of them. We get GFAC dollars, and then we redistribute that money um, to student organizations. That's one of our purposes. So, um, CAB is another GFAC organization. Um, the Cauldron. Whiskey Island, The Vindicator, Sports Council, mm, Student Bar Association, who's sitting next to me, WCSB, these are all GFAC organizations. So they all have different stakes in GFAC and to those student dollars. And so we're figuring out how to best distribute that money amongst ourselves. Um, but it's important for you as student representatives to figure out what meets the student need. Okay? Um, is anyone here a veteran? Okay, so historically this is a, a group who may be underrepresented, okay? They don't have uh, exactly the same representation that other groups may have. So there is an argument to be made on their behalf. These are just some of the conversations we're having. Actually, um, I'm in the ROTC office pre, uh, pre I'm talking to some of the older guys, and uh, Sergeant Sellers, who oversees recruitment at CSU. And uh, we were talking a little bit about like, funding and how that works. And they were complaining that they do a lot of joint training with uh, Case and John Carroll. And they were talking about how stuff like our radios here are like, ancient. We have to borrow them from Case. Like, things like that. So it sounded like funding was a real issue. And I told them, like, hey, are you guys getting any GPAC money? Are you getting any money through student government? And they're like, we don't know how to do any of that. So, Maybe something in our OTC program here, ours is very much struggling right now. Super low numbers. Being able to throw things like uh, recruitment events. They used to do this thing, I'm not sure how long you guys have been here at university, but I guess in the late 80s, they used to actually have the army come out and people would propel off of the woodland gym. <laughs> <laughs> so as a recruitment event. So this is the kind of stuff that was part of our culture is anymore, and it's an organization that would really benefit from that. Um, Kind of outside of GFAC money you're talking about. Well, they do have those tables in the desk. Yeah, they have to throw events. Because they would go up to those tables already interested, right? right. So I think one of, one of the things that they made a request for either last year or two years ago was to hold an event. Mm -hmm. um, and it didn't meet our criteria of how we fund organizations, so we weren't able to fund them. They need guidance, I think. And I think that's something that sure. I definitely wouldn't work with them. And if anyone else wants to come, Talk to you about that. Um, maybe we can keep going on that maybe for next semester. 
going to be useful. Mm -hmm. So I, I get a little bit of what, what you're talking about. Um, my parents are military, so I'm, I'm not a better myself, but I have military funding uh, while I'm going to school. Um, but back to GPEC. So Student Government Association gets all of their funding that they give out to the organization from this GPEC. It's just called yeah, the General Fee Appropriation Committee. Right, right. That's yeah, so it's a committee of those words that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And that all comes from the general fee, which every single one of us pays into. Right, so right. The funds that we use, yes, it comes from the state. Right, right. <coughs> okay. And that's split up between the vindicator, the college, and the Yeah, I, I have a okay. yeah. Okay. So were you looking for more of a discussion on what we like that extra period? Uh, not necessarily discussion right now, unless anyone wants to present anything, but this is a conversation that we need to have. We need to be making sure that we're representing uh, all all ranges of campus and all sectors of campus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I think Malik has done a wonderful job of answering your questions, but there's a, an element of this I don't want to be absolutely transparent about. So the GFAC groups that get the funds that Malik described um, are have been historically identified. So there's about 13 groups, okay, uh, that get the, the, that money. In the past, only those 13 groups got to have conversation about how that money was spent. What I'm asking the, the group to consider is, should other groups have access to the money? And if so, what does that look and feel like? So that's really the question that Malik is posing to you. Uh, the other part that I would add to what he's already shared with you is each of those 13 already identified groups have one representative on this committee, and they attend these meetings that Mallet just came from. That group technically is an advisory group to me. So they vote and discuss how funds, how they think things should be allocated. Those recommendations come to me. I act on them or modify them or reject them. Right. Okay, so, so I wanted to be crystal clear about that. And thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. No, I just think that like we're we're public servants and this is you know our money and I feel like if these groups, although they're not student organizations, I feel like they they need money and maybe they because they don't qualify as an organization, they feel like they, they don't qualify for it. But if we have the money left over, then I don't see why we can't bring that back to the students. So. Mm -hmm. That that is a conversation we've been having in GFAC because we, we redistribute funds. Is there any way that we can create an extension of SGA or an ARN to, to, to fund those organizations that we haven't been able to fund? Those are conversations we're having. So I'm just trying to get a total picture you know, with the help of all of you, uh, because obviously I can't have conversations with every student. Um, but, but you all can. You know, if each of you has a conversation with five students about it, that's, that's a lot of students. You know? so, so to facilitate your thinking, there are a couple of different ways you could you could conceptualize this. You could say you think philosophically any student organization ought to be able to apply for some of those funds, right? So that's that's the egalitarian approach. Or you might say you think SGA has a role to play in this, and we think there ought to be a, a unit of SGA that's set up to fund uh, groups that don't have access to these other funds, right? So in essence, a sub subsidiary of SGA that other groups could come to. So there are lots of different, or you might say, you know, we're okay with how it is. And we want it to continue operating this way. And these 13 groups will get all the money and everybody else can do what they want to do. So I think the, the point Malik is making is, we want this to be a student-led issue, not an administratively decided, we think this is how the funds ought to be distributed. What the percentage of what that we, SGA gave, from the GFAC members? Um, can't speak to that exactly, but we get, a, we get one of the largest shares. Um, between us and CAB, I think we have about at least 50% of the GFAC money. So I feel like seeing as we have a finance committee that meets with all these organizations that are already being funded, it would make sense to have that responsibility as well to- Potentially. Potentially. Um, so would that be with like a new committee that we would bring in, possibly, to 
ended up how potentially it would work out. Yeah. 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 I, again, I think to Mal's point, um, he, on behalf of me and, and other uh, members of the Division of Student Affairs, are asking for your feedback and input. What, how would you like to see this structure? Is there another seat? I think that you should have the same amount for every, so if like one of these third party groups requests for funding, then they shouldn't get as, they should get as much money as the other organizations are allowed. So if we cap all organizations at five grand, you know, $3,000 for on campus and 2000 off campus, then for these third party groups, you can't say like, oh, they, they can get more. I feel like on the basis of transparency and fairness, if we're gonna do that for all organizations, then we should set a policy in this committee or however we're gonna do it to say, okay, well, just to be fair, all the other organizations were, were capped at this amount, so you're gonna be capped at this amount, just to be fair. Sure, that's, I mean, essentially that's what GFAC does. Um, they can either provide permanent funding for an organization um, and say this every year they're entitled to a certain dollar amount. And, and so moving forward though, the most important part is actually identifying those organizations. Um, because then that's, then that's where we get into the conversations about how are we gonna decide about how much we're giving, where are we gonna cap them, how are we gonna get them to fund? Um, the reason that I did the call to you all is trying to identify those groups of individuals. So, oh, um, yeah, I think this is great. I think it's, I would love to go talk to students. I think a lot of us have opinions on it. Is there a way that you want us to get back to you on that? I, I think through Malik, um, make sure that they should be able to take an email, email, a text, like write me a post it and all this. <laughs> whatever whatever y'all have to do. Like, I'm going to do something official. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> As long as you can get it on my radar, it's helpful. So an email, I think, might be the best way. Um, and, and, <laughs> and perfect. And anything like that is extremely helpful in the way that we represent students. Um, any, anything that you see what's happening on campus, or you get a gear or a gauge for what's going on, we, we should be talking about it in the larger group. Because when I go and have conversations with, with administration, I'm able to give them a student perspective. Um, uh, uh, Senator Najib noticed an issue in the Urban College. Um, there's not enough marketing of a certain uh, program. Why don't students know about this program? That that issue was brought to the dean, and that dean has been brought to that, that issue was brought to administration, and now administration is working on that. There, it's a it's a larger it's a larger s scheme that we fit in as a student representatives, but we need to be doing our part in just saying. Well, this is what I see what's going on. Because the administration can't be having conversations with every student. That is what our primary role is. So if you just gotta send me an email or leave me a post to know, hey, I noticed this, hey, I noticed this, this is an issue. Just that idea is helpful. Okay? I don't think it would be a bad idea if we took the time to hang out and break to like, speak to students and then revisit it as a Senate later on. Because um, I would love to see Last year, what we did over break was we, we got together and we had like kind of an informal roundtable or discussion to kind of reinvigorate where we're going, what the issues are. Um, a lot of the times when we don't all see each other and we just come to these meetings, we forget what we're working on, we forget what we're doing. This is an opportunity for us to kind of brainstorm again, um, to come in fresh to the spring semester, so we'll be, we'll be sure to do that. Is there like any sort of deadline for any of this? Like, is there a specific date that they would like? Uh, yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, technically, no. Practically, um, absent any suggestion that comes from the student body, we will have to continue going through and making decisions about allocating funds. So, you know, if, if no new idea comes forward in the next two months, we probably will have allocated all the funds for this year. Okay. So, practically speaking, we missed the opportunity for this year, right? Yeah, I mean, just just to comment out that we need to break into a huge discussion, but I think that just the idea of student government having the ability to kind of forego the GFAC process to give funds to people like the ROTC program is awesome. 
like you say all the time, Alec, we talk about, if you look at, you know, Cav, they got almost as much money as we do, but all of their money is spent on events that they do. You know, we are, that's what we're here for, to spread, spread it. So I think that, that'd be awesome. You wouldn't have to do a wrestling match every time a student org like that needs to dip in and get a little extra. Those ones that have larger, you know, audiences. So I think that's great. I really, I, I think that's awesome that you brought that up. So looking forward to possibly moving in that direction. That way it's not such a wrestling match every time. You like to wrestle, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happens when you're gone? <laughs> it's interesting. I also think, you know, when, back to your point about how we choose who these groups are, I think that we should make it like first come, first serve, especially if it's like money that's left over, because that way other organizations, if they find out after the fact, they can't say, oh, well, we, student government was discriminating against us and we weren't able to have access to that funding. If we make it and we frame it in a setting in which it was first come, first serve, then there's no favoritism involved in, in that. And sure. It's just leftover money that we're redistributing to the students. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point. That's a fair point as well. Um, if we want to make a round break for those people that are interested in creating some type of a forum to get this discussed, I welcome that. Uh, is there anything else that you want to take to discuss? There's one more question there. Um, I just wanted to comment. I think like a lot of our issues with other orgs come with like either like different orgs or butting heads. With, honestly, with butting heads in general, I think if we had like some kind of um, like not necessarily a student event, but some kind of situation where SGA members were spending time with members of other orgs, that we can actually get a feel for how they like what kind of say they would have in that situation in terms of like who we get this money. But like that way we can judge whether or not what org might have better say in how So we do we do have a couple venues that we're we're doing that through. One is interaction hours. Um, and I know that I have, I don't I know a few of you have been doing them, but taking out that that kiosk and actually going and talk to students is valuable. Um, that's how I found out what a lot of student issues were when I was a senator. Um, so that's one of them. The thing that we're doing early on in the spring semester is a town hall. Um, we did that very early on in the fall semester and it was unsuccessful, I think because it's the beginning of the year, students don't really have a lot of issues. Now they have the issues, so we'll be doing that town hall. Um, and another thing that Director Jane was working on was um, a, a, a president's quorum or a president's summit of all the student organizations coming together, um, their leadership, to have conversations like we're having right now. Uh, and our student org senators are also meant to be, you know, in constant communication uh, with those uh, student organizations. Cool. And then also our student org uh, senators are also always at our disposal for those things. So yep. we're actually going to hear from one of them later on today. So. Thank you. Thank you. I mentioned that he's coming up already. So, uh, Senator Fink, please uh, present your senator. Hey guys, we'll make this as brief as possible. All right, uh, for those of you who don't know, my project this semester was to create a concise email list to be able to contact all the student orgs at the school, because obviously that'll help facilitate all of our, you know, being transparent and hearing their voices. So I want to explain to you what I've done and how every senator can access it. Uh, it comes in two parts, so I just kind of want to explain that. Um, Early in the semester, I poured through over all sorts of documents I could find to get a concise list of all the student orgs we have at our school. So by using um, OrgSync, uh, fun past funding requests, created a Google contact list with all the emails of 185 organizations on campus. So I mean, I'm pretty sure that's as thorough as we can get it right now. Obviously it'll change a little bit, but we're trying to add to that where, where and when we can. So unfortunately you can't send mass email through Gmail. They all got bounced back to me. So after talking with uh, Director Stevens a little bit, I, he recommended MailChimp, the server that allows you to send a you know, large email campaigns and really manage it. So what I did was I created a Gmail, or sorry, MailChimp account, and that allows you to move your Google contact list into that, sync it up. So I was able to send out a mass email to all 185 organizations, introducing myself and saying, you know, as a center, what we kind of want to work on. So um, any senators who are interested in doing that, because I think this is a tremendous tool to be able to have. I mean, we're just 
was talking about how we need to reach out and be a voice. Um, you need to create a MailChimp account separately. Unfortunately, there's no way we can create like one big one for a group. So, um, pretty simple process. It's free and easy. I mean, even I was able to figure it out. So, uh, the three things it asks for that I just want to clarify: as for a company name, a website, and an address. So, a company name I just did Cleveland State SGA. Uh, website, we just did the SGA Orcs and homepage. And finally, for the address, we did 2121 Euclid Avenue, SC 217, the Senate office. And I think that's just kind of more for their internal record keeping as opposed to anything that they actually use. Um, so once you do that, let me know. Then I'll send you my uh, Google contact list so you can just stick it right up. You don't have to go through all the trouble of finding all these orders and syncing it up. So, And like I said, I sent out an email. Um, I received some feedback. Uh, kind of a message I've been seeing so far is that we have a lot of organizations who don't feel like they know where student leaders are. And I mean, one that was brought up to me, someone made a good point that it's hard not to know who your leaders are until you have to go stand before them and ask for money. So I think going into the next semester, we're gonna, at least I'm gonna look at trying to find out ways that we can be more present to them, maybe, maybe taking trips up to the uh, student center organizations so um, that's pretty much all I have. If you need any help with um, MailChimp, please come to me. I'd love the chance to act like I'm a tech expert. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I have. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes. When uh, different uh, student organizations come and go um, and uh, become active or stop being active, will students, uh, senators, have an opportunity to uh, change the list? Yeah, it's my my kind of idea was the never changing thing that we can you know bounce ideas and you know different info around with each other. Cause I mean, there's some on there I'm sure who are not active and maybe I missed a few, so we just want that to be as thorough as possible. Any other questions for Senator Clark? Would then it be a good idea if we're going to have this list of contact information be a requirement when you become a group to like give your contact information to this list and kind of. Yeah, um, I mean, I can't exactly, like, I know all that is on WorkSync when you become an official organization. I mean, I can't access that as just a student senator here, but I mean, that's definitely an idea we can look at trying to access that info so we have an absolute, you know, thorough list of every organization on campus. Bringing it back to our SGA goals, I think being more connected with all of our student orgs is something that we obviously all want and hope to have accomplished this year. So if there is a way to get the student uh, account like, connected to WorkSync or available through WorkSync for not just us, for other student works, I think that would be a really great step for you to take. Right. So if anyone knows any tech stuff I don't, which you probably do, uh, let me know with it. We'll try to fix stuff. Sounds good. Any other questions for Senator Fink? Great work. Thank you. talking to say that they either haven't gone to the site or they just don't know how to get there. It's kind of obscure to them. So I've had to go through and explain that OrgSync is where all the organizations are and go up there and try to figure out, you know, a little bit of information about um, your organization that you are interested in. So I kind of brainstormed for a little while and I thought to myself, what if we had some sort of some sort of network, if you will, where you could get all of the organizations together and film maybe a 30 second to a minute uh, intro.
introduction to the organization. I'm thinking about doing this in the next semester. I've been talking to some organizations um, and just trying to get a feel for how we could do that. Um, I know that we don't have anything like this so far at CSU, so I think it would be a really invaluable tool for students who are brand new to CSU, who don't know what OrgSync is, and who really just don't have to go through all 250 organizations and read all the descriptions. A quick, short, succinct video kind of covering the overall goal of each of the organizations, specifically the bigger ones at first, and then maybe you could you know, kind of transport, transfer over to the smaller ones as well. Um, just to give these organizations some, not credibility, but give them some exposure to especially new students. Um, I definitely will be getting in contact with you, Senator Fink, um, and using your marvelous database that you have set up. Um, so yeah, I've also spoken with Mr. Dan Lenhart, and he will be working with me in the spring. When I told him about my idea, he said, oh, that's perfect. I've actually been thinking about the same thing. So I was like, yay, perfect. Um, and so yeah, I'll be working with him in the spring, and we'll be trying to get organizations together, especially the bigger ones. Um, maybe even some senators from student government to push to work, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, get some senators to kind of speak about what SGA is. Um, I know a lot of people don't know what SGA is or what we do, and that is not what we want to happen for the student body. So uh, that is the beginning idea for my project. Um, I've been gathering up information, uh, doing a lot of interaction hours, which I'm going to have to talk to you about that later, but, uh, and speaking with other people throughout the semester. So I would love any of your support. I would love for you guys to go out and talk to other students as well, see if they know what OrgSync is. Um, I know we have a lot of upperclassmen, so when you've been here for a little while, you kind of get to know where things are, but especially for freshmen, you don't really know where things are. So I think videos may be posted on the website or on some domain that is easily accessible to a lot of students would be a good idea. So if anybody has any questions, know where this would be, like what portal it would be on. Like would this be on the SGA uh, org page? Or is this going to be like, would this maybe be in like the ASC classes, showing the ASC classes? Or right. How, where do you want this to be shown? Because I think it's a great idea, but I just don't know how we're going to be able to best communicate this video to the students and make sure that they see it. Right. And know how to use it. Right. That's a very good question. So I spoke to Mr. Lemhart and he actually said that we'll have to work out the case more in the spring semester, but an option I was thinking about was putting it on the um, main website, but not accessible to all of, just to the general public, where you have to put in like the student ID and you go right to this special section for the videos. Um, I would suggest if if the video is like five to six minutes, maybe we could do uh, put it in a class uh, so we have not in festival. Mm -hmm. So we have new students, I don't know if you attend right. that one. So that would be maybe more visual to students. At Magnus Yes, Magnus Fest or Magnus Fest or Yeah, that's a really good idea. And Bridget Johnson. I think this is a wonderful idea, and I don't know if any of you have noticed, but CSU has been very active on social media. Um, with Snapchat and with Instagram, those are the only platforms I know. Maybe there's something new and better out there that I'm not addressing. Um, but CSU, I can connect you with the person that has been working with that. His name is Christian over in marketing. Um, an idea that I have for this awesome project would be to um, work with the director of student involvement, Ron, um, because they're going to have student organization fair next semester. So all the student orgs will be in one place at one time. So maybe we could work with Christian and his videographer that does that makes it look fancy, um, and maybe um, have student orgs, you know, have a, a room set aside during the student organization fair where the student orgs can pop up and kind of do their little spiel because we know they're all going to be there at the same time, same place. Right. So that way it would kind of 
taking care of all that, then they can also post it on social media, and they can help you with the, the video part. I don't know, maybe you're really good with video stuff, but I know I'm kind of touched by an angel in that department, so that way they can kind of help you and make sure it looks great. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I want to piggyback on Senator Koja. Um, about some magnet tests is a great idea. So I did my uh, orientation at Ohio State. They showed us like a video. It's about eight to ten minutes long. It was a quick rundown of all the major organizations and clubs there. And there's hundreds of them there. Um, I mean, they interviewed all like the leaders of each organization, or a handful of these organizations. And I actually did exposure to two that I actually ended up joining. And I probably would have never found out about it if it wasn't for that video. Right, right. I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Senator Clark? Another thing you can do, um, in addition to like the magnet stops and posting and like posting these videos on social media, is you might be able to email it out to new students that are coming into CSU and I guess a part of like information about CSU, like in addition to everything else mm -hmm. that you're doing, mm -hmm. you'd have these emails for these videos you know that they just like, watch it and right. okay. yeah. uh, I think from what I'm hearing around the room, I think we yeah. all just like make it so like you can't avoid the video <laughs> if you're involved in CSU. So I know we have like the YouTube channel. I was even thinking like you can't put full length videos on Instagram, but you can do like excerpts. Like you have them. Um, yeah, so I, I think it all sounds really good. And you can just like put it everywhere. So There's cool people have this yeah. like to be them. And we go see it. So no matter what. Mm -hmm. I know as a first year student I was flooded with a lot of papers about editing and a video played at Madden's Press, as Senator Koja um, brought up, would be a perfect idea. Because those things stand out. I know when I was coming to CSU, I actually watched the promo video for the whole school, and I was really impressed by it. And so I think that has a lot to do with um, people getting excited about organizations and the school so I'd like to see a lot more of that. Going off of what Senator said, I think to make the ANC